So you remember the big picture video that I provided for linear mechanics, where we define the linear kinematics and we display them using time derivatives going to the right. So just from these derivatives, position, first derivative velocity, second derivative acceleration, we were able to make a connection to force and momentum, and force is the first derivative of momentum. And then we were able to get kinetic energy, or we were able to get energy out of velocity and out of position. And the time rate of change of that energy is our power. Now I'm going to do the same for rotational mechanics. So if you take a circle with a radius, we define theta as the ratio of the length, they use delta s in your book, divided by the radius. So all the way around is going to be 2 pi. Its units are the radian, but you can leave it as nothing because meters over meters has no units. Angular velocity is the time derivative of theta, and as r is constant, it's just the time derivative of L, which is the tangential component of velocity. And so that's going to have units of meters per second over meter is per second. So how about direction? Because this is a vector. What is the direction of omega? What is the direction of theta? We use our right-hand rule, and I don't expect you guys to be watching this with your eyes. I expect you to be doing this with your hand. Because our minds are not very smart, our hands are what needs to be doing the thinking for us. And let's say we were rotating this way, theta, so the velocity is in this direction. And let's say we're slowing down, so the tangential acceleration is in that direction. So we might rotate this wheel in this direction, and that is a rotation into the board. Similarly, if it's moving in that direction, omega is into the board. But we might be slowing it down, which means the change of omega is out of the board, and therefore its acceleration, d omega dt, is oriented out of the board. So theta would be into the board, or signified by an x. Omega as well, because we're rotating in this direction, is into the board. But alpha, the rotational acceleration, is in the other direction. It's coming out at the board, indicated by a bullseye. The directions can be found from this cross product. Omega cross the radius is a tangential velocity. Let's try that. In this example, omega is into the board. So omega into the board cross the radius gives you tangential velocity. So what is angular acceleration? Angular acceleration is a time derivative of omega. And therefore, the second time derivative, or the curvature of theta, how fast your rotational velocity is changing. So if we substitute in omega, we're going to find that this is equal to the tangential acceleration divided by r, and so the units are going to be per second squared. The direction is determined by this cross product. Let's try that once. If this is alpha in this direction, then alpha coming out at you cross the radius. Alpha cross the radius gives you the tangential acceleration. Now it's worth taking a moment right now to identify a completely different animal. And that is, when you are moving around even at constant velocity, you're accelerating because your tangential velocity is constantly being directed into the circle. This is called centripetal acceleration. And that's, that's v squared divided by r, or substituting in omega squared r. This is your linear acceleration into the center of the circle, and that's going to then be in meters per second squared. It doesn't belong here right now, but it's worth mentioning, especially because students confuse the two. Alpha is how quickly your angular velocity is changing, if you're spinning faster or slower. And centripetal acceleration is how you're accelerating this object into the center of the circle anytime you have uniform circular motion. Don't get them mixed up. Now when we go in this direction, when we went in this direction for linear mechanics, we multiplied by mass. Now instead we're going to multiply by the moment of inertia, which is the mass weighted with r squared, the integral of r squared over the entire mass of your solid body. Angular velocity times i is angular momentum. So if I have something spinning, 
that has a moment of inertia, it has some angular momentum oriented in the same direction as omega. And it can be thought of as how hard it is to stop something from rotating. However, it's also how hard it is to change its orientation. Because if I presently have some angular momentum in this direction, and I want it to be in that direction, the change is this plus the change. The change is in that direction. So I have to add a torque. So in order to turn it from here to here, the torque isn't in that direction. It's actually in this direction, which we can feel. I need to try to turn it this way in order to change its angular momentum in that direction. And I can demonstrate this. So how do we make something rotate? We have to add a torque to it, which is radius cross force, or the perpendicular component of a radius times a force. And that's a time derivative of angular momentum. So you want to change something's angular momentum, you need to apply a torque to it. How fast you change that angular momentum is determined by the strength of the torque. So when we substitute in and we use a chain rule, we get these two terms. And we can see that, yes, torque is equal to I times alpha, just like force is equal to mass times acceleration, only for a rigid body where the moment of inertia doesn't change. That is, the skater pulls in her arms and she speeds up. That is this term right here. So for a rigid body that doesn't change its shape or mass distribution, you can neglect this and you have I times alpha, which is just this times that mass term, the moment of inertia. Now how about units? If torque is radius cross force, that gives you kilogram meter squared per second squared or newton meters. The question is, then can we make this a joule and say it's a joule? And we can't. The reason we can't is because a joule is a unit of energy and if we put a torque on something static, we are not changing its energy because we do not do any work. In order to do work, something has to move. Work is force times displacement. And so if I want to do work on something, you can see my hands, I'm putting force on it and I need to have a displacement as well. So you can see if I do some work on this wheel, it manifests itself with a change of kinetic energy. And so we say, okay, what is work if we were to put it in rotational terms? So this is the energy box right here, work, which is change of energy. And so if we look up here, if delta x is L, then the parallel component of force must be the tangential force. And we can multiply then by r over r, and this becomes theta, and this is just torque. So while torque already has newton meters, in order for torque to become work, you need to rotate through an angle. And theta is unitless, so now once you rotate through theta, you can change that newton meter to a joule, which is kilogram meter squared per second squared. Now why is that product? And the reason is, if I'm putting a torque on in this direction, which is upward, then the amount of work is going to be that torque times the rotation in this direction. So for instance, if it's rotating in this direction and I put that torque on it, I wind up doing negative work because my torque is up and theta is down. For instance, if this isn't spinning and I let gravity act on it, what happens? The torque is in this direction and theta is in the same direction, so work is being done and you can see that manifest itself because this thing speeds up. But when you spin it and it processes, now the torque is still in this direction, but the change of theta is in this direction. And you can see, gravity doesn't do any work on it, it doesn't change its energy. That's just like if I were pushing on a train, but the train was moving like this. It didn't do any work. Okay, lastly, power is the rate of change of energy or the rate at which I do work. And so we can substitute in work is force times displacement for linear work. And at any given moment, we can pull the force out and see, oh, the rate of change of displacement is velocity. So while work is force times displacement, power 
is force times velocity. We substitute in the angular terms and we can do the same thing and see that power is torque times omega. So we think of that for bicycling, right? The power that I put into the pedals is the torque, how hard I'm pushing on the pedals. But if I'm spinning the pedals very slowly, even if I'm putting torque on them, the rate at which I do work is very low and so my power is low. <clears throat> However, if I'm spinning very fast, that torque will produce much more power for the pedals. And that's why when you see like professional bicycle racers, they're spinning their legs very, very fast, as fast as they can, while still putting out their maximum amount of torque. Units, that's not work, that's a watt. A watt is a joule per second, is a kilogram meter squared per second cubed. All right, so there you got it all, you guys. We define angle, and we take the time derivative in this direction. Theta, how fast theta is changing is omega, how fast omega is changing is the angular acceleration. In this direction, we multiply by the moment of inertia, and we get this gorgeous quantity, angular momentum, the time rate of change of which is the torque applied to the system. And then down here we have energy, the time rate of energy is power.